from Florida to secret. Mr. Chairman, I rise to offer Amendment 582 as a designee of Mr. Williams of New York. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number one, printed in House Report number 118-142, offered by Mrs. Luna of Florida. Pursuant to House Resolution 583, the gentlewoman from Florida, Ms. Luna, will and, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Florida. To protect American interests, safety, and intellectual property, this amendment will end the corrupt practice of sending taxpayer dollars to the Chinese Communist Party. Our hard-earned money is going to Chinese research, infrastructure, education, and these are the only destinations that we currently know about. American dollars are lost with no recuperation or retaliation. Mr. Speaker, I'd ask my colleagues across the aisle to support this common sense amendment and support Mr. Williams' legislation. I yield back. Does the gentlelady yield back? Reserve. The gentlewoman reserves. And the For what purpose does the gentlewoman from California seek recognition? I'm claiming the time, ugh, claiming the time in opposition. The gentlewoman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. I oppose this broad, reactionary, and irresponsible amendment because it would harm U.S. interests and undermine scientific progress for the American people and the world. There is no question that the PRC poses real challenges to the United States and that it is engaged in technological and economic competition with us. We know that the PRC is engaged in harmful research to boost its military, that it engages in technology and IP theft. These challenges worth tackling, and the Biden administration and Congress have taken steps to protect ourselves against these activities in effective and responsible ways. This amendment, however, goes entirely too far. When a careful and scalpel-like approach is needed to ensure we are not contributing to China's military or providing China with advanced and sensitive technology and know-how, this amendment uses a guillotine to cut off support for any form of research collaboration between the United States and China. As drafted, this amendment would prevent any U.S. funding of, contracting with, or partnership with any individual or entity connected to the PRC government. Let's be clear about what that would mean. That would prohibit collaboration with all the major public universities in China, endangering academic collaboration and research partnerships between U.S. and Chinese institutions. We should be worried about AI and supercomputing. But this amendment would cut off collaboration on completely harmless and often very beneficial social science research on things such as poverty reduction and economic development. This amendment would make it harder for American academics and researchers to partner with the Chinese people, many of them who may not have any love for the CCP and would benefit from talking directly to and working with an American and learning about the freedoms and values that Americans enjoy. More critically, this amendment would cut off collaboration on medical research that could literally save lives of Americans and people around the world. Let me give you one example. Right now, doctors and researchers at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York are collaborating with the Chinese Thoracic Oncology Group to conduct shared clinical trials in hospitals in the United States and China to develop modern cancer drugs. We need to make sure this research collaboration happens in a safe and secure way. But why would we prohibit it? Why would we not want to work together to find a cure for cancer? Ultimately, we cannot and must follow, must not follow the Chinese Communist Party's example and close ourselves off to the world and the Chinese people. That is what they do. That is not what America does. So I oppose this amendment and urge my colleagues to do the same. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman reserves and the gentlewoman from Florida is recognized. Communism, as well as any country that embraces that ideology, is a cancer upon this world and sometimes a guillotine is the only solution. So I urge my colleagues across the aisle to support this incredible piece of legislation and if you don't, that's on you. I yield my time. The gentlewoman yields and the gentlewoman from California is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield one minute to Representative Adam Smith. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think the comments made by my colleague were perfectly appropriate. 
we have to deal with China and a whole series of issues. But to say that we should not collaborate with them on basic scientific research that, as was bluntly stated, could literally help us cure cancer is not something that is in our best interest. We also have to realize that China is a major factor in the world. We would like to get to a more peaceful relationship with them. Cutting off all contact doesn't make sense, even at the height of the Cold War when we were aggressively trying to stand up to the Soviet Union, a bipartisan group of legislators kept dialogue up between the two countries. I agree with my colleague, this amendment goes too far, and I urge opposition. Uh, with that, I, I yield back. The gentleman yields. And the gentlewoman from California is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. May I inquire as to how much time I have left? One and a half minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would like to yield the balance of my time to Representative Jacobs from San Diego. The gentlewoman is recognized. This is another amendment that's fear-mongering about China when Republicans are continuing to actually undermine our national security by restricting and banning abortion. Our service members volunteered to serve in our armed services. They didn't volunteer to give up their reproductive rights. So I'm thankful that DOD has taken steps to support service members and their dependents' reproductive freedom by covering the travel and transportation costs for abortion and fertility care in the post-Roe era. And let's be clear, DOD's travel policy is consistent with the law. We shouldn't re reverse this progress and take away our service members' freedom when they've already sacrificed so much for us. In the one year since the Supreme Court struck down the constitutional right to an abortion, 20 states have restricted or banned abortion. This decision has disproportionately burdened our military families who don't often choose where they're stationed. They can't freely take off days from work, and many can't afford to travel thousands of miles and pay out of pocket to receive the care they need and deserve. All because of the current statutory ban on DOD providing abortion services, which I strongly oppose. And that's why DOD's travel policy has been so important. As one of the few women of reproductive age in Congress, I know how important access to abortion and fertility care is to our health, well-being, freedom, economic security, and empowerment. And taking away these fundamental rights doesn't just hurt these individuals. It hurts our military readiness, recruitment, and retention, and morale, putting our national security in jeopardy. With many people having very limited or zero access to abortion services where they are stationed, our military's ability to adapt to evolving conflicts and challenges the is severely compromised. The gentlewoman's time expired. I yield.